Welcome back to Adventures with Rosie and today it looks like we're doing a bit of DIY because I found a leak. A leak in the back of the caravan. Oh. So for those of you that are following along the adventure, you'll know that we are like three or four days at this point into our year long adventure. We didn't even make a week and we've got things going wrong in the caravan. Um, last night and the, actually the last couple of nights, Chelsea and I have been hearing the pump like every maybe five minutes just kind of pulsing. Um, like it does when you turn a tap on right and the pump kicks in, but this is at night, everything's switched off, shut off and the pump's going throughout the night, just, just a little bit every now and again. Today I was dumping the tanks and I walked around the back of the caravan and I noticed a puddle of water on the ground. Not a huge puddle but you know decent enough to catch my attention and that would explain that pump ticking on right. I'm pretty sure there's a hose leaking in the shower, the fresh water uh, that goes up to the shower head and that would explain why that pump needs to keep turning on to keep that pressure up. So in the back of the caravan there is a waste hose that comes down out of the shower, um, you know the drain hose. And the water was dripping off the bottom of that drain hose. So I thought initially maybe that's leaking or it's got a split in it or a loose connection or something. But then I noticed that there's two hoses that wrap around that drain hose. Um, one is hot water and one is cold water that feed up to the shower mixer. And water is running down from those pipes from inside the caravan through a gap in the silicon down the pipes onto that waste pipe and dripping onto the ground. That means We've got an internal leak somewhere in our shower. Um, I guess now's the time to catch it right before it, you know, leaks in caravans are terrible. Um, obviously with rot and things like that. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that what it is is where the two hoses feed up to the back of the shower head. I'm hoping there's just, uh, not the shower head, sorry, the mixer, um, the little mixer arm. I'm hoping there's a loose connection in there. There's actually only four screws to get that uh, unit off that has the um, shower mixer on it. So I'm hoping I can just take that off. I'm hoping I'll see some water that's just leaking out of one of those and running down the pipe, through the floor and out onto the ground. That's what I'm hoping. It could be worse than that, but I need two things first. I need to go to the hardware store and get some silicon because that uh, square box in the shower is silicon sealed and some thread tape as well probably i don't know if there's any washes or anything in there um but yeah i'm gonna go and grab thread tape silicon and i'm gonna see if we can fix this because basically we've got the next three weeks planned then we're on a ferry to the south island so any stop at a um you know motorhome repair center is gonna set us back a few weeks no doubt um and it's also public holidays here in new zealand so nothing's open so i'm gonna go and see if the hardware store here is open pick up a few things and then we're gonna see if we can fix it See if we can fix it, hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed. All right, so this is the shower mixer I was talking about. Um, this unit is held on with four screws and also silicon in place. Um, I've just taken the shower and the shower head hose off um, just to get in. So what I'm hoping is that it's one of the connections in behind this um, that I can just take this unit off, fix whatever needs fixing behind it, and then re in this unit. Um, I'm guessing the water's traveling down the inside of this wall here. So yeah, let's uh, take it off and see how bad the damage is. I found the leak. <laughs> um, this thing here was terrible to get off. The amount of silicon sticking this to the, um, to the back of the shower there, it took me a while to pry that off. But basically um, there's two pipes that feed into the back and the black one, uh, if I kind of jiggle it, I can feel it dripping. And it looks like the water, um, I put a torch in, I actually dropped a screwdriver all the way down the back there as well, but that'll have to stay there I think. Um, but I put a torch down there and it looks like it's just been running cleanly down the hose, straight out the hole in the floor. There's no sort of water marking on the floor or on the walls, so I think I dodged a real bullet here. I just need to figure out how to fix that pipe. Um, and then yeah, once fixed, I'll re-silicon it and then I just have to keep an eye on it, I suppose, but whew, I'm glad I found this now and not a year from now with a whole lot of rotting wood in the back there. So a bit annoying, but um, yeah, positive to find it now, I think. 
Do you know what the fix was? All I had to do was tighten up the connector. It was loose. It was almost falling off that pipe, which um, in hindsight, if it fell off while we were driving and the water pump was on, it probably would have pumped 100 litres of fresh water into this little cavity. <laughs> so um, kind of annoying, like it wasn't even, it was just like finger tight almost. So yeah, I don't quite, um, hmm, a bit frustrating. But I'm gonna tighten it up and then turn the pump on and just see if that pump ticks over. It's kind of the, the surefire way to tell, I guess, if I've fixed it, is whether or not that pump keeps cycling. Well, it's been about an hour now and the pump hasn't turned on once. So whew, thank goodness for that. I realized in the end that the um, not only was that thread loose, but that I needed to slide the pipe more in on those quick connectors obviously the pipe gets slid in and then tightening it up clamps down on the pipe so I slid it in no matter which way I wiggle it whatever it doesn't leak nothing's dripping out of the bottom either so whew, pretty happy um, I'm gonna have some tea and play with the kids now but I do need to clean all that silicon off which is annoying obviously I need to reapply all that silicon I want to do a good job so I guess that's what I'm doing tonight and um, I will show you and discuss our fridge woes tomorrow um, our fridge is not doing a good job of keeping cold at the moment and I think I have an idea why so we'll catch up with you guys in the morning and discuss the fridge. A bit hard to complain about the shower issues when uh, Chelsea's got a lovely pork roast in the Weber on the go. <laughs> All right, well, it's been about a week now since those last shots you just saw and the shower hasn't leaked again. Thank goodness for that. Um, we've been down some long, bumpy gravel roads uh, to the Batuna Chasm, which is a video you'll see in a few days. Real cool uh, chasm in the middle of this farmland, kind of like a slot canyon style sort of thing. And it was down like maybe 10 kilometers of gravel road and quite bumpy and um, that pipe stayed solid. No more water dripping out the bottom. So I think I fixed that one, which I'm pretty happy about. Um, let's talk about the fridge quickly. I think I may have also fixed that this morning. Time will tell. Um, but we have a three-way fridge in Rosie here. It's a Medic 184 litre fridge. Nice big fridge. One of the reasons why we like the Jayco Caravans. Nice big fridge freezer in them. Um, we run it on gas because they're not wired by default to run off your batteries um, in the Jaycos. And we don't ever stay on uh, 240 volt shore hookup power, you know. Um, and basically ever since we've left home running it on the gas it's just been not doing a very good job like it's just staying I don't know it, it, it just doesn't seem to get cool enough it cools down overnight all right but then during the day it sort of struggles to keep up and some of our stuff hasn't been staying that cold um, the top shelf seems to be the coldest spot so we put all our meat up there and um, I know it's quite popular for people to get um, computer fans, right? And then mount them on the outside top vent of the caravan, the top uh, fridge vent, to suck air out. Um, you know, it draws air over those fins and sucks air out of that cavity. And so I sort of thought maybe I should do that while we're in Wellington. Um, you know, a little DIY job one afternoon. And I opened the top vent and I noticed that the top of the fridge was covered with insulation material. Kind of like pink bats you'd find in a, in a house. And um, it was kind of just sitting there, like I could lift it up. It was just sitting on top and I was like, that can't be right. Um, so I messaged Lee. Um, Lee, thanks for answering my queries. Lee is a service manager of Jayco Canterbury, uh, the Jayco dealers down in Christchurch. Super nice people down there. If you're ever looking for a caravan, hit them up because Lee has helped me with so many di different little things in the caravan. And I'm um, always offering good advice and stuff. Helped us out with the bunk nets and all sorts of things. And um, it was, it was a weekend and I said, Hayley, ignore this message till you get back from work, but they've got this fridge overheating and I see this insulation and he got back to me straight away. Thanks Lee. And um, basically said, nah, that shouldn't be there. That looks like it's fallen down. So the inside wall of the fridge is insulated because you normally insulate the cavity your fridge sits in there. They're more efficient that way. So the roof is on an angle like that. The fridge is the fridge is here, roof's on an angle. Insulation was must have been glued or fixed to it somehow and it's fallen down over the fins to the point where it was like pretty hot under there. Um, 
so I sent him some pictures and he said, no, it's definitely fallen down by the looks of things, you know, tuck it out of the way or pull that bit out. Um, so I removed the insulation and man, it, now it's just working so much better. I had to dial it back to three. It was on five, it started to ice up on five. It was getting so cold. Got the coldest beers in there right now, which I'm pretty stoked on. So um, I thought, I didn't know what was going on. I thought I had this whole DIY project and it turns out just to be a bit of insulation that's fallen down. So yeah, <laughs> mildly frustrating. Um, I don't think I'm gonna try and fix the insulation back up on the inside. I don't know how to, maybe spray adhesive or something. Um, obviously don't wanna put anything in there that's flammable because uh, you know, like a spray adhesive might be or um, any sort of glue that's flammable. If you've got any tips, maybe leave them below, but uh, yeah, I'm not sort of too sure what to do in that area because obviously you've got the hot fins at the top of the fridge there with a ton of heat coming off them. So yeah, so I'm gonna keep an eye on it. I don't think I'll do the computer fan thing just yet. I'm gonna see how it survives in the summer over the next few weeks. And then if I have to, I'll get a couple of fans and wire them in and show you guys that. But a couple of problems, couple of solutions though, which is good. Um, sort of started out as headaches and yeah, not too bad in the end. Teething issues, I suppose. I'm glad I bought a little basket of tools um, so I can sort of give things a crack myself. So everything's fixed. We're on track still. Hopefully the, the fridge stays cold because it's going to be pretty warm in the South Island, uh, especially up the top of it. And hopefully we don't get any more drips, but I got a spare tube of silicon just in case we do. Um, so hopefully that's the end of the woes for now. Um, and yeah, different video. Our next video, we're getting back to our adventure, exploring, checking out that Patuna chasm I talked about. Um, staying in a cool little spot down by the river as well, Morrison's Bush, which is beautiful. Um, but I guess I thought I'd take you along on this because I want to show you guys everything that happens this year, right? The good and the bad, not just the cool places we go, look at these cool places, like the the sort of other side, I guess, to full-time RV life. So appreciate you watching. Um, new video in a few days. I'm going to try and do a couple of videos a week, see how that pace goes. Um, We'll see how we go. <laughs> so yeah, stay tuned. If you aren't subscribed, whack that button below. And yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.